Hey guys, I'm Nate, welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that while fairly basic, is also extremely useful. We're going to show you how to tie six of the most useful knots that I know and what they're good for. For tying knots, all you're gonna need is a piece or two of rope, and we've got that, so let's get started. To make handling it a little bit easier, let's just cut off a piece that's, I don't know, eight feet long? Now there are hundreds or probably even thousands of types of knot that have already been used and named that all have their place. But these are the six knots that I've found to be most useful in my life. The first type of knot we're gonna learn to make is called the bowline. It's a good knot for making a strong, stable loop at the end of a rope. To start with your bowline, measure off whatever size loop you want at the end of your rope. With one hand holding the rope where you want your loop to start, twist a circle by grabbing one section and lifting it up away from yourself. Take the other end of the rope and thread it through the back of the small loop you've just created. Wrap the short piece of rope around the back of the long piece of rope. Feed the short end of the rope around the long end and then back through the front of the smaller loop. At this point you should be able to grab these three parts of the rope with one hand and the long part of the rope with the other and pull it tight. If the small loop running around the long end of your rope hasn't tightened all the way, just give it a tug on the big end of the loop. At this point, unless you're using extremely slippery rope, this will hold pretty much indefinitely. It's a very stable knot that will almost never give out, even if it gets wet or is in bad conditions. Another advantage of the bowline is even after it's been tied for a long time or put under a lot of stress, it can usually be undone fairly easily when you want it to. There's another way to tie the bowline that won't come in handy as often, but someday you might find it useful and it's actually a way to tie it one-handed. To demonstrate, let's clamp our rope into this vise because I need something to hold on to the other end. There we go. If I remember how to do this right, ta-da! To tie the one-handed bowline, I have the long end coming all the way around my waist. I'm gonna hold the short end of the rope with a little bit of extra play at the top. Now I'll drop my hand down on top of the long end and twist it in a circle. This forms the loop that we made when we were first tying our knot. We now pass the short end of the rope behind the long end, grab it, and pull our hand down through the loop we've created. Then with some tension added to the rope, it pulls itself tight. The next knot we're gonna learn is called the clove hitch, and this is a great knot for attaching a rope to a tree or branch or any sort of pole. We have here a pole and a vise, and this is what we're going to tie our rope onto. For the clove hitch, once again, we are going to work with a long end and a short end. To make our clove hitch, it's best to give yourself enough extra rope that you can wrap around the pole once or twice without any problem. Start by wrapping the short end of your rope around the pole once and having it go underneath the long end of the rope. If you've got it on top of the long end of the rope, you've done it wrong. Continue wrapping the short end of the rope around the pole, but don't pull it completely tight. You want to leave some slack. With the short end wrapped back around, you want to pass it over the long end of the rope and then under the loop you've just created around the pole. This knot will actually cinch itself a little bit tighter as you pull on it, which makes it great for attaching it to round poles. Like the bowline, one of the nicest things about this knot is that after you're finished putting it under tension, you can usually get it to slip open very easily to retrieve your rope. Now it turns out that the clove hitch, like the bowline, also has a one-handed method of tying it. Its usefulness is a little bit different because you end up with the entire knot, which then has to be placed over the post that you're trying to tie it to. So if you just have access to the middle of a branch or pole or tree, this way won't help you out very much. One advantage of it, however, is that you don't need to have access to the end of your rope. The whole thing can be tied just in the middle. To start, have the rope hanging off of your pinky and thumb with it passing in front of your other three fingers. Twist your hand toward you so the rope overlaps itself. You then want to loop your hand down underneath one side of the rope and grab the other side. At this point, you need to slide your hand out from the bundle of rope wrapping around it. These two loops that I'm still holding on to, that's the knot. If I drop those two loops over my post, I can grab the ends of the rope and pull it tight. 
Now the next knot we'll learn is called the taut line and it's also good for attaching a rope to a branch or a pole, but this one is very adjustable and you can use it to tighten your line after you've tied it, almost as though it had a ratcheting system. To start off, let's wrap our rope around our pole and leave ourselves about one foot of rope to work with at the end. To start off, the short end of the rope passes over the long end of the rope. The short end of the rope then comes up through the loop and then wraps all the way around the rope a second time. You can see we have the two coils going around the long end of the rope. We then want to wrap our rope over those two coils and the long end of the rope, down underneath, and then through the loop we've just made. When our knot is tightened, it will securely grip onto the rope, holding our rope attached to the pull. If we add a little bit of slack though, we have the ability to slide our knot up and down the long end of the rope wherever we want it. This is a great knot if you're trying to hold a tarp or a tent or something similar nice and tight because you can tie the knot, pull to remove any slack, and then adjust the knot up the long end which will shorten your rope, holding it pulled tight against your pole. Our next knot is called the sheep shank and it's used to shorten a piece of rope when it's too long but you don't want to cut it or when both ends are already tied to other things. To start, we'll make three loops by grabbing our rope and twisting it clockwise. One, two, three. You can see we now have sort of a clover shape going on. We have our first loop with the rope passing on top. We have our second loop with the rope passing on top. And we have our third loop with again the rope passing on top. So the reason we twist it in the same direction every time, so we always have the end of our loop passing on top. We don't want to have one loop going the other direction so it starts on top and ends on bottom. That's incorrect. Now to tie our knot, we'll take this loop, twist it a little bit more clockwise, and grab the side of our middle loop. We'll then do the same thing for the other side. Twist it a little bit clockwise, reach through, and grab the side of the middle loop. Now we pull the middle loop through our side loops. And then as we tighten down on the rope, it will cinch up and hold itself together. We've now shortened our rope by a considerable amount. Let's see the difference. Here our rope is about 8 inches long, if we relax it, pop these middle loops out, kind of just hold on to the same spot without letting go. We now have at least 2 feet of rope, and if you just make your middle loop even larger, you take even more rope out of your middle. Our next knot is one that's used for attaching the ends of two ropes together. Sometimes the rope you have is too long and you can use the sheep shank but sometimes your ropes aren't long enough and you need to attach two of them together. This next knot, called the sheet bend, is good for that. I have here the ends of two ropes. You can see this is its own separate rope. You could actually use this for attaching two ends of the same rope together as well, but I'm attaching two different ropes to each other. We fold the end of our first rope over. Second rope gets passed up through the bottom, goes all the way around both parts of our first rope, and then passes through the loop in itself that it's created. It shouldn't pass back through the loop from the first rope. Pull that tight and we have a nice secure knot that will not let go. One thing to look out for is you want to be sure that both of the short ends are on the same side of the rope. If I hold the rope with the short end of our first rope facing down and tie the second part of the rope the same way, you can see that the short ends of the rope are now on opposite sides from each other. This is not going to be quite as strong. You can see that the angle as we pull begins to slide more. One of the advantages of the sheet bend knot is that it can be very good for tying together two ropes of different thicknesses. Here I've got our thicker rope and here I have a piece of thinner paracord. We can pull this tight and we have a strong connection between the two. The last knot we're going to show you today is possibly the simplest one, but it's still very useful. It's called the figure eight knot. The figure eight knot is the knot that you should be using most of the time when you tie an overhand knot. For reference, an overhand knot is the most basic, simple knot you can tie. Everyone knows how to tie an overhand knot. They do it all the time. Pretzels are overhand knots. And while it's not a useless knot, it's really not good for all that much. Most of the time, an overhand knot is used to either stop a rope from fraying or to provide a stopper so that your rope can't slide through a hole. 
For both of those uses, I highly recommend using the figure eight knot instead. The figure eight knot is almost as easy to tie as the overhand knot, and I think it works a lot better. To start, simply pass the short end of the rope behind the long end of the rope and wrap it around. Wrap the short end of the rope behind itself and through the loop that you've just made. As you pull the rope tight, your knot is already finished. There you have it, six of the most useful knots I know. If you've practiced these, then when it comes time to use them, you'll be able to do it without even thinking about it, and it'll be a great time saver. Obviously, there are hundreds of other knots that I haven't shown here, and dozens of ways to maybe even tie these same knots that I didn't show. This is just supposed to be a basic guide for knots that I actually use in everyday life. I know that this is a pretty simple project, but it is one of the most useful things that you could learn in an afternoon. Thanks for joining us for this video, and remember to come gear yourself up with products and merch at thekingofrandom.com. See you there. Get close up. Hey guys, it's Grant here. I'm not in a position to be in these videos right now, but that's exactly why Nate's here. Nate is the man. He's got some incredible talent, and I think he can pretty much build anything. So let him know in the comments what you want to see, and he can probably make it happen.